This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're in Cinema 4D. We're gonna take a look at how to create this kind of hexagonal grid floor effect within Cinema 4D, bring it to After Effects to composite and do all the finishing touches. And it's gonna be a pretty easy, but pretty nice tutorial to kind of get your hands on in Cinema 4D here. Now I got the idea for this tutorial from a Vimeo video that I found by Jeff Bryant and his team for the Hawaii PA Lite, I guess, cell phone. And this is what it kind of looks like here. It's a very nice little animation for a, a cell phone spot. They use a lot of nice hexagonal animation stuff here. And as you can see, we get this really nice texture, really nice animation. Uh, these hexagons are kind of rising. And this is what we're gonna try to recreate right here. It's very cool. It's a very simple concept to create within MoGraph. It's a fairly, uh, fairly easy one. Um, so, yeah, I highly recommend checking out his work, Jeff's work here. Um, they do a lot of animation stuff here and a lot of crazy hexagonal animation design right here. It's pretty cool. I recommend checking out the whole video. Um, but this is what we're trying to recreate today. I kind of made a really rough concept here. And, you know, it's just uh, some hexagons rising. And I guess the trickiest part is getting the floor to align correctly, but there's a clever little trick that will save you some time. And I'll show you that in this tutorial here. So let's check it out. We're in Cinema 4D R15, so no reflections channel right now. Uh, but we'll go into the uh, attributes here in the project settings. We'll change the FPS to 24 frames a second. Looking good. We'll change the max uh, frames to, let's say 125. So we have that. We'll go into the render settings here and change the output from uh, to 1920 by 1080. And we'll make it 24 frames a second. And uh, we'll just hit OK. And here we have our Cinema 4D workspace. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cylinder. So click and hold, select the cylinder. Since this is a hexagon, we'll make it a six segment rotation. So we have our hexagon here, very simple. We'll also go ahead and shrink it down. Let's say uh, 20. So we have a smaller hexagon here and uh, that's looking pretty good. We'll just uh, keep it like that. And the height, I think it's okay here, but what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and create a, let's go ahead and rename this to the body. We'll hold down the command or windows key and just click and drag to make a duplicate. We'll call this the top. And I'm gonna make a pretty simple model here. We're not gonna create anything as complex and detailed as the original. I'll go ahead and lower the height down, maybe bring it up here and maybe increase the radius by uh, by five. So we get this kind of nice little bevel, pseudo bevel, maybe, uh, maybe 22 and make it a little bit thinner. Maybe around 2.5, bring it up, a so nice little cap. And maybe we can even decrease the height of the body a little bit. Uh, bring it down. Something like that. Bring it back up. And this is some really crude modeling techniques. Um, just kind of get the basics in there. So we have something like this. Then I want to go ahead and again, hold down the command or window button and duplicate the, the top here. And we'll call this, this one here, the glow. We'll push it down just slightly. Something like that. And uh, let's go ahead and maybe make it a little bit thinner, maybe the height of 1.8. Thinner strip of light, just like that, kind of like a beacon here. So I wanna go to the top. I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice little fillet bevel here. So maybe a bevel of one and segments of two. So we get this kind of a nicer rounder edge here. Maybe segment of one, very, very slight bevel like that. And we'll change the fong angle from maybe uh, 80 to, let's just say 50. And I think the bevel is a little bit too much, maybe 0.5 of a bevel radius. Uh, you know, something like that. We can always go back and tweak it. And for the glow, we want it to be kind of round. So we'll also maybe add a fillet or fillet cap and maybe set it to three and radius of maybe 0.75. So just a little bit rounder, something like that, very basic. Um, so let's go ahead and just put it as a child of the body and put the, and put the glow as a child of the body as well. 
like that. Maybe we'll push the glow up like that. And then here's the trick. So as you can see, if we place this into the cloner, you're going to get everything right next to each other. So it's going to be a point here and a point here, and it's going to lay flat up here. But you won't get this nice solid grid. Now the trick is to create another duplicate copy here. Actually, I think the glow may be a little bit too wide. Let's go into the glow and maybe decrease the, the radius to maybe 21. It's a little bit thinner. Something like that. All right. Maybe you need to increase the top as well to maybe 21. Looking good. So what we need to do is we need to make another duplicate copy of the body. So we'll hold down the command or window button and click and drag to make a duplicate. And we'll just call this body two. And the trick is to essentially align this. See, as you can see, if we just clone this, we'll get something like this, or we'll get something uh, like this. And this will work, but you won't get the nice uh, tall grid here. So we need to maybe place this somewhere on the sides here. Make sure you just touch the X and Y and just line it up as close as you can. Doesn't need to be completely accurate, but we do want to make it close. Something like that. So it's kind of touching. So we have two pieces just like that. And now if we just parent this body two to the body one. So it's one solid piece. If we actually clone this, this will give us a nice little grid here. So here we can go to MoGraph, we can go to the cloner object, and we'll drag our body into the cloner object. Go into the cloner, and we'll set the mode from linear to grid array. And we'll set the count from the Y axis to one. And as you can see, we get this really nice grid. Um, we'll set the count to maybe, uh, let's just say 25. And we'll set this Z grid amount to maybe uh, 20. And we'll just rearrange the size until things fit. Um, this is kind of just experimental right now. You just kind of adjust everything until it kind of fits. But I know for sure that it fits. So we'll just maybe give it a little bit of a gap like that and adjust the X until it fits nice and cozy, just like that. And we have a very, very subtle gap. Just kind of give it that nice look here. And if you guys are wondering, I'm pulling down the one, two, and three key to kind of move around, zoom in, and pan and orbit around the scene here. There, so here, we'll just set up a basic scene right here, maybe, maybe right here. And then we just leave it like that, uh, something like that. We will create a camera as a reference point right here. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and learn how to make this thing kind of offset. Now, since we're using MoGraph, we can actually use Effector. So we'll click on the cloner object. We'll go to MoGraph, Effectors, and check out the random effector. And this will just randomize your stuff in your cloner object here. I want to rename this to Global Random. And this will affect everything. I don't want to affect the X or the Z. I do want to affect the Y very slightly. So I want to give a, a little bit of variation to the ground, maybe by two. We kind of have a you know not so uniform ground here. I'm gonna go ahead and create another cloner here. So I'm just going to click on the cloner again, go to MoGraph Effector, and then go to Random. And then now this is affecting everything. I only want to affect certain areas of this grid. So I'm gonna go to the fall off and turn it from infinite to box. So now, as you can see, when we move this uh, random effector around, it affects just the the areas in the box because of the fall off. So I'm gonna put it maybe around right here. We'll go into the fall off here and we'll change this, the size down a little bit. We'll increase this in the X. It's a little bit wider. Kind of just move it down. We'll make it thinner for sure. So maybe like 25 and uh, just increase that. So we get a nice little strip We'll go into our camera view and just check it out. And this is looking okay. We'll just move it maybe, maybe over here. Cool. So now we have something like that. Um, so we can go into the re 
to the this one here. We'll call it left random effector. It will go into the, let's see, parameter. And we don't want to mess up anything except for the Y position. We'll crank this up until our height runs out. So maybe somewhere around there, I believe. Let's check it out. Yep, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and animate this. So we'll start at frame zero. We'll go into the Y position here. Hold down the command or control and just click on the stopwatch here. And we'll go all the way to the end. And we'll just hit another stopwatch. Go to the beginning. We'll set this beginning keyframe to zero. Sorry about that. And again, command or control click on the little circle here. So now we have this really nice animation of things just kind of rising up. Pretty cool. We'll go ahead and, and duplicate this random effector and we'll just drag this to the right. Now you're not gonna see anything right now because it's not attached to cloner here. So we'll go into the cloner, go to the effectors and drag this one in as well, the new one. We'll call this right effector and we'll just go into our camera view and just check it out and just kind of move this a little bit. Clearly we're off centered, but I'm not really being too exact about this. So something like that, we'll just adjust the camera and uh, just do a quick render. So right now things are starting to look kind of like cylinder because we have the weird shading and everything. We'll go into the, uh, the body here, fog angle, and we'll just set it to, let's just say 40. So it's more jagged again to the body fong tag and just set it to 40. So we have more of a kind of a hexagon kind of look. And uh, I feel like the hexagons are a little bit too wide, um, but of course you can always fix that yourself. Let's go ahead and apply some basic materials. I'm gonna create a new material by double clicking. We'll call this the body. We'll drag it into the body as well as the top. And we'll do it for the body too and the top too. So we just have a material, hop into the material here. Let's see here, we'll change the color from a white to kind of like a, a very dark gray blue kind of color. And we'll turn on the reflection. So we'll set it to maybe 10% uh, or so. We'll add a Fresnel shader. And I'm going a little bit fast because there's a lot to cover and those of you trying to follow along, you know, this is this is not how much tutorials are designed. They're kind of designed for you to watch, get everything in, and then go at the end of the tutorial and try it yourself. Um, you know, you can kind of pause and everything, but I kind of designed these tutorials to where you can, you're just sitting and watching it. You're not necessarily doing it as I do it. Um, because I want you to kind of have the whole experience of learning what I'm doing and kind of watching instead of just half do, watching, half doing, and kind of just not really putting your uh, your full attention onto the tutorial. Uh, so, so I'm kind of moving a little bit fast, um, but that's just my nature and uh, that's how it works. So we're going to the specular, we'll increase the height. So it's a very, very strong highlight, but we're gonna make it very, very thin. So just the really nice bright areas are gonna get that nice specular. Under color, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a quick texture. I'm gonna go and do a load image. Now I have this texture here from DeviantArt, which I'll link down below um, in the article. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe change the mix strength down to maybe around 3%, maybe maybe 5%. And uh, so I can go OK. And uh, you can apply this to bump channel as well, but I've noticed that it gives you a lot of bad aliasing, which, um, you know, it's not really worth it for me in this particular case, in this tutorial here. So we'll set it to around five. We'll go into the materials here, texture, change the length U and V to maybe 120. It's a little bit bigger. We'll do a quick render and things look like crap because we have no lighting and uh, we need to also make the glow material. So we'll call this glow. We'll uncheck color, we'll uncheck specular. We just want the bright luminance. And we'll change that color to kind of like this nice orange yellow glow and drag it into the glow just like that and so we have something like this and this will look a lot better once we kind of composite everything into after effects here 
you know, something like that. As you can see, we're already getting some really nasty aliasing. Um, so let's go ahead and zoom out of the camera here. Let's go ahead and create some lights. So first I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new light. We'll change it from an Omni light to an area light. We'll raise it up. And uh, let's see here. We'll go ahead and maybe hit R on the keyboard and just rotate this light at a slight angle. And we'll just increase the size of the light. Hit E on the keyboard to go back to the move tool and just kind of adjust the lights here. I want to light um, I guess the the rim of the polygons or the hexagons here. So maybe something like that. Increase it a little bit. I'm gonna go into the light for a shadow. I'm gonna choose the shadow map soft, so it's very, very fast rendering. We'll go to details and we'll go to the fall off and choose the inverse square clamp. And maybe we'll just decrease the fall off here. So Bring it in a little bit and just raise it up. Something like that. Maybe we'll even tint it kind of a blue color very slightly. We'll go ahead and duplicate this light. And uh, let's go ahead and move this to the right side here and illuminate this part. Um, we'll just hit R again to rotate it at a slight angle. We don't want things to be a little bit too perfect, you know? Just rotate this a little bit. Hit E on the keyboard, maybe just offset it. So we'll make one kind of closer to us. It's kind of hard to see with all these uh, guides. So we'll maybe move it right here, push it back. And uh, we'll make this maybe 90%, we'll make the other one maybe 110%. Go back to our camera and just do a quick preview. It's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe we can even decrease the fall off even more because I kind of want the black, the, the end to be kind of like an infinite, infinite darkness here. So we'll just move this, something like that. Maybe tone it down to 100%. And of course, you can get more detailed in modeling this and lighting this. I'm doing a very, very crude and basic kind of lighting setup here. And, uh, you know, we kind of have something like that. And I want to go into the fog for the top here, maybe change it to something where I can get some nice bevel. So after tinkering around a little bit, you should get something kind of like this. I just added a main light and messed around with the top's fog angle to maybe 60 or so. And you'll get something like this, um, you know, it's not the best. You could light it better to kind of bring out the bevels and everything and just kind of make it look a lot better than this. This is very crude, but this should work here. I'm going to go ahead and animate the camera here. So we'll go to the camera, go to the coordinates. We'll go and click on the stopwatch for the X position. And we'll go to the end and we'll just kind of just zoom in a little bit, just like that. And, uh, you know, we get something like this that kind of just slowly pans in things start moving up slowly you get some something like this and of course you can fine tweak it and uh, you know get into more detail but this is looking kind of okay to me in this tutorial you kind of get the idea let's go ahead and set up the rendering process here i'm gonna go to the render settings i'm gonna go into uh multi-pass i'm gonna uncheck the regular image save we'll call this I'll make a new folder we'll call this uh passes and we'll just call this hexagonal grid. And we'll save it in a really cool format called OpenEXR. That's gonna hold all of our multi-passes into one single file. We'll make it maybe 32 bits. Um, set like that, it's okay. And we'll go into the multi-pass. We'll go into uh, anti-aliasing. We'll change the anti-aliasing from geometry to best. That would kind of get rid of some of that nasty aliasing uh, edge issues there. And we'll set the min level to, let's say, 4x4 four four and 8x8 eight eight for max. We needed to really get this really clean edge. Just will increase render times, but this will give, you, give us a nice clean edge here. For multi-pass, we're going to go ahead and add a RGBA image, just in case. We'll add ambient. 
We'll add diffuse, we'll add specular, we'll add shadows, reflections. We will go ahead and uh, add the depth. Now this is what we forgot to do, set the depth pass here. We'll go back and uh, go to the camera. We'll go outside here and we'll change, go into the camera settings, we'll go into the, the details here. We'll enable depth of field map front blur. And we'll go into the um, focus distance in the object here. And we'll pull the focus all the way to the end of our, our scene. And then we'll go into the details. We'll pull back the end of the map frontal blur to maybe around here. So it's going to start from here and it's going to end all the way down here uh, for the depth mat here. So just something like that. Uh, we'll go into the camera again, go to the render settings. We'll make sure under output, we're going to render from current frame to all frames. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. You can enable ambient occlusion. You can enable global illumination, make it a lot more detailed. Um, in this case, this is fine here. We'll do a quick task render to the picture viewer here. Let's go to the image here. And as you can see, we're rendering it out slowly. Um, we should get a lot less, uh, I guess, weird aliasing edges issues. Um, so something like this. I'm not really liking the the specular too much here in the lighting, but uh, it should suffice. And uh, we're gonna composite into After Effects and hopefully make it look a little bit better. And by rendering it this way, we can have these separate passes here. So for example, we go to the single pass. We can see that the reflections are kind of jagged a little bit, but we can fix that. We have the ambient pass, which is kind of like the luminance pass or the luminance channel. Uh, so we can just isolate the glowing areas. We have the shadow pass here. We have the specular, which we can reduce in post, the diffuse, all that stuff here, and the depth, of course, like you see here. So it's pretty cool. We have all of our passes. Go ahead and let this render. But before we get into After Effects, I want to go ahead and thank our great sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it very easy to create beautiful websites, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have tons of themes to choose from, beautifully crafted. They have a very easy page builder so you can create your website the way you want it without having to know any coding language or anything like that. They have awesome 24 hour support and starting at just $8 a month, you can get a website up and running right now with also a free domain name for a year. Best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order as well as support the dojo. So check it out, squarespace.com slash dojo, Squarespace, everything you need to create a website. So here in After Effects, I just imported all of the OpenEXR files in a sequence. And uh, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it into a new comp. So we get something like this. Now, by default in Cinema 4D, we're working in linear workspace. We also rendered in 32 bits. So I want to go ahead and change the depth from 8 bits to 32 bits. We're going to go work in uh, sRGB and we'll linearize the workspace to match what we did in Cinema 4D. So we get correct color here. And, uh, you know, right now you're seeing only one file. So what happens to all the multi passes? What happened to the reflection, the diffuse, the, you know, the depth pass? It's all within the open EXR file here. And to extract it, we need to go and go to an effect called 3D Channel Extractor. And this effect will extract all the passes out of the single EXR file here. So I'm gonna call this the diffuse. And let's go ahead and click here. And under layers, we're gonna select the diffuse pass. So now this layer is only gonna render the diffuse pass. We'll duplicate this and we'll call this reflections. Click again and select the reflection pass. So this is just the reflections. We'll duplicate this and, you know, let's just say make shadows, all the shadows. And we can keep on doing this until we finish with all of our passes. Uh, for example, the ambient, which is very important. This is the, the glow that we created. Duplicate it again, select specular, call it specular. Duplicate, we need one for illumination. Duplicate it again. This should be our depth pass. And I believe that's about it. Uh, you don't really need an object buffer. I added one in, in the original demo, uh, but you don't need it in this case, or at least in my case. And lastly, the depth pass. And we need to pre-compose this because I will be adding some effects to it. Uh, so we'll pre-compose it. We'll call this depth pass. 
and we can leave that at the bottom and just disable it. So just like that, we have everything set up. Let's go ahead and blend this thing together. So let's work on the diffuse. We're gonna turn on the reflections and let's set the blending mode from normal to screen. I'm just gonna screen it on there. We have our shadows here, which we will multiply. We have our ambient, which we will need to either screen or add. I like to, let's just do screen. Specular, we'll add that in, we'll make the screen. And finally, we have illumination, which I want to just play around with. I usually do kind of like soft light, just to kind of bring it up a little bit, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. We'll call this the grade. We'll go in here, we'll maybe apply curves. We'll maybe just barely raise the shadow ups up a little bit. Just kind of crank it up and uh, just kind of give it a look here. I also want to go ahead and apply a curve to pretty much everything. Um, this is the beauty of rendering in multi-passes. You can actually control the individual passes so we can increase the diffuse a little bit. Maybe crush it down a little bit, add some contrast. Maybe uh, decrease the blues a little bit. Something like that. For illumination, again, we can apply a curves effect. We can crank this up a little bit so we can start seeing it and just maybe lower down the blues. Reflections, again, we'll apply curves. Pump up the reflections a little bit. Shadows is okay, I believe. Specular, we need to control. Uh, we need to just kind of pop it up a little bit and just kind of crush it. So we get something like that. And for the grade, maybe we can go into the blues, maybe raise the blue just ever so slightly. Something like that. Maybe add a little green in there so it's not too blue. And uh, maybe increase the reds and the highlights. It decreased it in the shadows. Just, you know, I'm just messing around. And then for the, let's see, the ambient here, which is the glow, let's go ahead and apply a stylize and apply a glow effect. That will really make it pop. And since we're working in 32 bits, we get this really, really nice vibrant glow. We'll go ahead and increase the threshold a little bit. Maybe increase the radius just ever so slightly. Decrease the intensity to maybe 0.75. And then we'll duplicate the glow and we'll make this a lot larger. Decrease the intensity down. Something like that, maybe play with the threshold a little bit. Something like that so we get some nice kind of intense glows and it just kind of makes it a lot more vibrant and poppy. Now, if you're getting too much aliasing, we can go into the reflections here and uh, we can just apply a very, very subtle Fast blur, maybe uh, maybe by 0 0.5 pixels, repeat edge pixels, and that will just kind of blur out the reflections channel a little bit, so we don't get that obvious kind of jagged edges here. Something like that. That's looking pretty cool. Um, in the original demonstration, they added some chromatic aberration stuff like that. I'm not going to do that in this tutorial here. Um, so we'll just call this grain. We'll add a grain effect. I actually have my Dojo Toolkit script right here which has a preset for that. So we'll just add a grain. And we need to lower down the intensity to maybe 0 0.015. Just a subtle grain to kind of break away any of the banding and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and set up our depth of field here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to layer new adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this uh, depth of field. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply a third party effect under Frisch Lift, depth of field. You can use the built in camera lens blur effect, which does the exact same thing. Um, for the depth layer, we'll select the depth pass. We'll set the blur radius to maybe around 10. And then we'll select our depth here. So I kind of want to focus right here. And then we'll adjust the focal point. You know, maybe something like that. Just a very, very subtle depth of field. Um, so it's not too bad. And then in the original demonstration, I also added uh, some, some motion blur. You can use CC Force Motion Blur 
or whatever you want. I used um, Revision Effects is uh, Real Smart Motion Blur here. So that's pretty cool. But again, this is basically how you create the polygon effect. I'm gonna do a quick RAM preview. So just like that, you created a really, really interesting, but very easy kind of hexagonal grid effect. It's a fairly easy effect. And of course you can do more to it, add global illumination, spend more time, uh, you know, modeling, texturing and lighting and all that stuff. But this should give you a basic idea on how to create this, then Cinema 4D and After Effects. So that's pretty much it guys for this tutorial. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.